This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. The Scottish Highlands seaside town of Nairn came to prominence in Victorian times. Back in its heyday, royalty would come to stay. The actor Charlie Chaplin could be spotted around town, enjoying his holidays. Others were drawn there by the fact that Nairn enjoys a more temperate climate than many Highland locations and occupies an idyllic spot on the coast of the Moray Firth. There are many areas of stunning beauty within easy reach, including Loch Ness. The dolphins, birds and other wildlife are an attraction for many. Gloriously unspoilt, the beach stretches for miles. Inverness Airport is a mere ten-minute drive away. If driving is your thing, there are hundreds of miles of uncluttered road with breathtaking views to enjoy. The overwhelming majority of Nairn residents that I have met have been faultlessly polite, generous and hospitable, and only too happy to talk. Strangers will say good morning as they pass you in the street. Some people actually leave their front doors unlocked when they go out. I kid you not, for I've seen it with my own eyes. Communal spaces are well tended, and the verges and lawns look resplendent. The population of the town is about 10,000, which swells to around 11,000 if the outer-lying areas are factored in. As with any small town, some people are known to many, some are known to all, and others keep themselves very much to themselves. I absolutely love the place, and a framed print of the town adorns my office wall. Of course, Nairn has its issues. The high street is in need of investment in order to attract businesses to some of the shops that lie empty. Illegal drugs can be sourced fairly easily if you're so minded, but I think the same can be said these days of just about every corner of the UK. There are small pockets of social deprivation, but this is a town unused to murder. The last killing that could be remembered by locals was the result of a fight following a wedding party back in the mid-1990s. Overall, it's a wonderful place with the people to match. I would recommend it as a destination for a weekend away or a holiday in a heartbeat. If golf is your thing, you are in for a treat. Not surprisingly, perhaps, Alistair and Veronica Wilson chose it as the place to raise their young family. In 2002, they paid £162,100 for an imposing three-storey double-fronted sandstone house that dominates Crescent Road. Rising high above the other properties in the road, the nine towering chimney pots of number 10 give an indication as to how many rooms lie within. In the past, it had been a hotel, and Alistair and Veronica would later give the hospitality industry a try. Crescent Road is separated from the beach by a row of small houses and the grassy links where locals walk their dogs. In summer, the local cricket club play matches on a part of the links that has been adapted. A three-minute walk from what was once Alistair's front door would find you with sand beneath your feet. Crescent Road is only about 160 metres long from end to end. As you walk down it from the main road, which is the A96, on the left there is a short row of houses, a large bed and breakfast establishment, then there's Alistair's house. Two or three smaller houses complete the road on that side. On the opposite side, almost directly in front of Alistair's house, is what used to be known as the Havelock House Hotel. Nowadays, virtually everybody refers to it as the Havelock. Essentially, it is a bar with a few letting rooms above. There is a small restaurant area on the ground floor, although this is mainly used as a breakfast room for any staying guests. The Havelock has outside decking, benches and tables, and an adjoining car park, which can take about ten cars. The car park entrance is directly opposite Alastair's front door. After the Havelock, there is a small row of terraced houses and then what is now called the Braval Hotel. At the time of Alistair's death in 2004, this was known as the Shambles Bar. Crescent Road is just about wide enough for two cars to pass one another. 
there are no pavements. The street lighting is adequate. No more than that, the road is certainly not bathed in artificial light.'